We built a small factory example in AnyLogic. We used the personal learning edition. At the time of recording, the latest version is 8.6.0, and you can download the PLE version for free from AnyLogic's website. I'm going to go ahead and create the model, calling it small factory. I make my model time units minutes, and I just store it on a particular place on my computer. If you forget to set your model time units or you want to change it later on, you can always navigate to your project view, go to small factory and change the model time units. I believe it is important that you get a model running as quickly as possible. Uh, don't try and build an entire complex thing and hope that it will run in the end. Rather jump in and get something running as soon as possible. So I'm just going to start with the bodies and introduce something so that I can see whether my model runs. And I call my source block source bodies. Now you will probably have to go in real life, gather the data and find what the correct inter-arrival time or the arrival rate would be. In this particular case, we're going to set it as an inter-arrival time that is exponentially distributed. With a lambda parameter of 1 over 10, or implying that there will be, oops, I don't know why it does that with a Mac, that the inter-arrival time will be on average 10 minutes, but it will be exponentially distributed the time between arrival. We will create multiple agents per arrival for the bodies, and they will arrive four at a time. Right? This is just how we're going to set it up. Next, we just add a queue as a bit of a buffer so that all those entities can just queue before they move somewhere into our model. And I use the prefix queue and just call this queue bodies. I'm not going to change the capacity. Uh, it's just a buffer, so we might want to um, set it later to its maximum capacity, or you can set it to something useful like the storage capacity of your, of your body storage area. We're not going to associate it with a location yet, but next we're going to make these bodies move along a conveyor And let's just use conveyor as a prefix, conveyor bodies. And from the layout, this seems to be roughly 20 meters, and let's assume they will move at one meter per second. And finally, we're going to sync and just get rid of these bodies. We're not going to do anything with them right now. So very quickly, I can save my model, build it, and it seems that I have something that is building successfully. I'm just going to change my model time and make the model time units uh, stop at a specific date. Let's say it uh, will end at five in the afternoon, and these people will start at eight in the morning. <clears throat> We're not going to give them a lunch break. We're going to overwork them completely. So from eight till five, that will be the model runtime. And the randomness, let's just keep the seed fixed for now. And let's just use today's date as a seed value. The default is to make it one month later. Let's just redo that again. And I see that we generate 192 bodies. Can run it again, and it should be consistent with a fixed seed. So far, so good. We have a model that is running. 
Now let's add some animation to this example. And for this, you will need the factory layout. And I've uploaded this and made it available on the GitHub repository for industrial engineering here at the University of Pretoria under a repository called BUY321. So you can see the URL there, github.com forward slash IE dash UP forward slash BUY321. And if you navigate to graphics, you will find the small factory layout there. And this is the one that we're going to use. Right, so <clears throat> there's the URL there at the top. Or we can just save the image. And I'm going to save it to my small factory model. And just call it small factory layout. And in, in any logic, I can navigate to my presentation palette and drag an image onto my workspace. It will ask me where to, to find this image and it defaults to where my model is being built. So I'm going to select the small factory layout. And it seems as if at this point, this looks fairly well sized in terms of our blue box that indicates our screen. Um, the important thing, if we're going to build and run our model on top of this layout, is at this point to actually go and lock the image. And the value of that is so that you cannot select it. Even if you click anywhere on this image, um, you won't by accident select it and then move it around instead of moving something else in your model. Now, what if you want to resize it or change its location? In order to get a handle on it again, you can navigate to your projects view, go to main, go to presentation, and your image should be available. If you select the image over there, currently it's called image, let's call it image small factory layout, just so that we, if there are multiple images, we know how to find it. And <clears throat> with it selected, you can then unlock it again. All right, so you can change the position and the size, decide whether it should be visible or not. So we added our layout. Let's see what it does. And we would expect that it does not do anything. It appears there, but nothing happens on our layout. And that actually makes perfectly sense. Because what we have is we have a model logic area and we have a physical space area. Um, or an area at least that represents physical space. And you have to make a distinction between these two because they are quite different. All right. <clears throat> So the model logic we will build here at the top and everything that relates to physical space or being represented in physical space, what we're going to refer as space markup, will be on the layout itself.